those who are watching this video in the future, or who will be, why does God want you healed? That's a question we should actually check. Many people have come to me and say, man of God, pray, please pray for me. I want to be well. One of those questions I ask them, why? It looks like I'm intimidating them, right? Let's understand why you want to be well. Maybe so that, okay, you go back to clubbing and all the other things. Oh, what? The other shocking question I always give them is, what do you know about the mind of God regarding healings? Advice, never seek the hand of God when you've not yet sought his mind. Praise God. Before you are looking for the hand of God, make sure you know his mind. Praise God. Praise God. What is the use of God blessing so a man with so much money so he opens all the best night nightclubs in town? And cause the wasting of destinies again and promote drug addictions and all of that. Praise God. Sicknesses may take you to heaven earlier. This is why you should get healed. Hey, that's a bonus statement, right? Come on now. Come on. Come on. When people get saved, guess what they can can they die? Those who are born again, they will go to heaven. And last I checked, God doesn't want you in heaven now. You are supposed to be here. Have you fulfilled what you are about to do? You right now, looking at me. If you have to die right now, will you be fulfilled? Uh huh. So you are supposed to be here. This is why when now something comes into your body to disturb you, the power of God comes in to remove it so that you stay back on course. So God heals you for his purpose and for his name's sake. So it's not even about you. It's about God. Clap to the Lord right now. This is a strong statement. We get back from here and, and listen to this message two times. You understand what I just said? God wants people healed because he doesn't want them to go to heaven. heaven. I refuse to die like Lazarus. I mean, remember Lazarus in Luke 16. He lived his life like a very poor, holy and righteous man. Very poor. Very poor. Hello. And died with it. Can you imagine? Not for me. Say not for me, guys. Not Say good health. Good health. I will experience in Jesus' name. We are still talking about the revelation of the king's glory and power. Why should God heal you? It is your kingdom citizenship right to be healed. <laughs> I've not heard people protest when the Alice Center, maybe the mission, the missions are bad, original hospital. Yeah. They protest, right? Yeah. Say the government should do what? Something. Because they know as citizens of this country, it is the responsibility of my government to ensure that healthcare service is freely accessible, made available for all, when people need it. Here you are as a legal member of a country called the Kingdom of God. It is the responsibility of the kingdom government to ensure that you are healthy. So it's a citizenship right. Clap to the Lord, please. This is if you know it's a citizenship right, you will see some begging men of God to pray for you. Running haters, haters, sowing seed, sowing corn and beans and maize, prophetic seeds and all these things that are here around. And I also see. You will settle down with God and His word. If you understand it. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has held bound these 18 years, be freed on the Sabbath day? Jesus said, according to him, his government's position is this. Any of his kingdom citizens has the right to be healed and delivered from demonic oppressions. When next you see a sickness coming around you, Get very aggressive. You cannot be here. It's illegal. That's how I do it. My talking is falling, right? I cannot be saved. God, this is not happening. Amen. Then I check myself. Have I done something wrong? If I have, I repent quickly. Then I have every legitimate right to deal with it. Tolerate no sickness. It is your citizenship right to be healed, restored, blessed, and prosperous. And maybe it's the will of God for me to be seen one, one time. Nonsense. Religion. It was in the days of Jesus like that. Many were packed in synagogues with sicknesses in their bodies. Jam packed. Religious people were busy with doing religion and observing Sabbath laws, ceremonial laws, ritualistic laws, until another dimension of power stepped in. And Jesus found the body he actually built, sick lives. See what happened along the way. And he trashed every sickness and got men restored. Can I show you something? The man who made me well said, I should take off my mat and walk. I like that. I like that.
is one now. And religious people got so angry. That man cannot be from God because he has broken our law. This is your challenge. Coming here is a risk you took. Praise God. You have no idea. Many of your, co your colleagues in religious churches are angry at you right now. I know so. I've been there. I've been in the system. So I talk with authority. It's okay. Just watch them. Praise God. I talk with authority and bonus, and I don't beg, and I don't apologize for healing sick people by the authority in Jesus' name. I don't do it. I have been wasted before by sicknesses when I was still a child, and I nearly died. So I don't know what I'm talking about. Hmm. Uh, running up and down to these churches to pray for to get healed. Are you the one who is sick? Wait until the day it touches you. There was a time a young man called me and said, Look, man of God, we need to see my father. And the father is a very important senior pastor of a major church. I'm like, what? Major church? This background? Will he accept? Say, Yeah, I know him. It's just that he has to, you know. I said, that's not a problem. I was like Jesus in the equation. I said, carry me, let's go there. I want to go and heal him now. And we went over. This man had been wasted. He was walking like this. Got up on the chair. This guy is going. He couldn't barely stand walk. In the name of Jesus Christ, back, be free. Left in faith. He got relieved in an instant. The following day, I was going to buy fowls. Say fowls. Uh -huh. from the man who told me for prayer. And I saw the man pray for him. Like, you are in construction right now, man of God. I like it. He said the thing left for good. I like the stranger left. So imagine a whose senior pastor should have been mocked in the name of foolish religion. Do you know why Jesus was so angry at religious people? When you read the Bible, you think you are reading history. Study, understand it. He was so angry at them that he would literally curse them. He used the word war unto you. You won't enter the kingdom of God because you want to major on a religious. Yet you stop others from entering and experiencing kingdom life. One of those privileges as a kingdom citizen is good health. And you are being taken care of. Worry not what you will put on and eat, la la la. Because my kingdom takes care of this. Say I'm a kingdom citizen. Say I'm blessed. Say I'm blessed. Why should God heal you? Is there anything good in being sick? I know there are people who like to be sick. They have their sickness. That's why they say, this is my sickness. This is my backache. I have been sick all this while. You have not called me. No one cared to greet me. All of this thing. Shut up. Get out of that sick bed. Stop looking for sympathy. It's time for you to walk and help people. I know people who attack others for not greeting them because they were sick. And they have personalized and they own it. So it's their sickness. Every year they know it's their sickness. And actually, there are people who are smart. They take advantage of the sickness to do a business. Oh, Kana, those Kalibra, Ishanagas. Acts chapter 3. This man was carried to the temple, get called beautiful. And each time as he lay there, people came and they were giving him money. So because of that lameness, the man made a lot of money. And I'm sure he must have established a business. <laughs> you got me right. So Peter comes in and says, This is nonsense. You are getting up from here. And right there, a crippled man healed. Church people said, This cannot happen. How, why did you do this? They came after Peter and Paul. How dare you do this? And they persecuted them and vexed them. Even threatened that they never again use the name of Jesus Christ. Because there was a dimension of power in that name they didn't understand. And that name did not see you for free. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Go back home with this dimension of God's power and make sure you fix problems at home by this power. Amen. Fix problems at your work. Amen. Children are sick before you get to the hospital. Gather them. Come here. This river has to leave. Amen. And do it. Please do it. You will see results. Amen. When the this, you are praying for someone, you will convince now you will be that thing. The first case I ever ministered to someone who God healed was a shock to me. I used to be playing about it. I didn't know. I would feel that there was some power that this would go out and heal someone. But I would, I would, know, I would restrict it and cover myself in religious humility and be very nice and natural so that 
big people in churches love me and relate with them, look very Baptistic and all of this nonsense. Until the Lord rebuked me, I was at work. A lady came all the way from Batibo. This finger was almost like eating up the flesh. And she covered this thing with a dirty cloth. I was coming for a book graphic. She was pregnant. And kept explaining some private things over and over. I'm like, why would this woman is disturbing me? What's your problem right here? I'm not here to do counseling. Over and over. I and mean, it's not once, not twice. People have done that. They bomb into my brain. They just start telling sensitive things. How do you control that? And so I looked at her and smiled. I said, okay, now just so that I cover this whole thing, right? So the talking doesn't continue. So I said, this finger will wear me now. Are you happy now? She smiled. Left. Came for two months later. And reminded me because I forgot. That as you said like that, the finger, when I wear the finger started changing. Amen. Okay, okay wait. I'm like, okay, that's wonderful. Glory to God. And she untied it and showed me. I could recall how it was that first day. I could literally see it better. Huh? Okay. I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me, say, be very vigilant and stop playing. It was very clear. You are not the one who it, I'm the one who it, so let me tell you. From that day, I repented and I asked God to forgive me for all the cases there were, and there have been many cases like that. Who came in, I would literally heal someone by the power of God, and I neglected. And right then, now I said, After this, we have to talk, and we got this whole thing fixed for good. When she came, the finger was not very active, but the aspartic movement was not very active. Before I was done with everything, she untied the whole cloth and said, Henceforth, this is fine, and she's never going to cover it again. And started doing this. I watched it, there was a storm. Sorry, this thumb, right thumb. Pregnant woman, right thumb that is sick with little babies. Husband was killed because of the crisis. She's pregnant. Who will assist her in washing the dresses? Um, I should be a very religious, nice person and be very diplomatic and nice and you know, clothed in humility with a fast stomach. Dormant power in me, nonsense. Be healed. My God. Until you are this radical and aggressive, you cannot see the power of God that brings glory to the King. Praise God. Miracles are experienced as a result of desperation. My God, I want to see your move. Then you see it. Praise God. 